So a, a bit of an interesting job here. I had a customer who's got a late 90s uh, Dodge Ram ECU that he wants to put in to one of his older like 30s air pickups. Uh, but it had an immobilizer on it, so he had to send it to me, uh, asked me to turn out the uh, immobilizer. Um, I've already done part of the process. I've already removed the chip, and I've read it. Uh, I'm sure you can read it in circuit, but I, I always just pull them out. Uh, it's, you know, for me, it's just as easy to put the whole thing back than to fiddle with the different little wires and lifting the different pins. I just I don't have time for that. Uh, but I read it with uh, Orange 5 here and have edited it already and now I just have to put it back so I have to remove it from my adapter here and I guess I'll just use some hot air for that maybe I'll just leave it I'll just leave the whole adapter on here it shouldn't, shouldn't take much to get it off of here I do have my heat turned down a little bit lower than normal because I didn't want to melt my orange five worse than what I already have. All right. So now I'm going to switch to my scope view here. Make sure I have the orientation right. Like all. Um, let me try to get some focus here. That's good enough. Just a little bit closer, maybe. Okay, so need to apply flux here. So I just refilled my uh, syringe, so it's kind of hard to get the flux out because it's so damn long. Because I filled it all the way to the top. That's good enough. All right, so then we're just going to try to line it up as best we can through the flux. And once we have it how you want it, um, there's different ways you can solder. You can drag it, you can do pin by pin, but I don't know what we're going to do here. Sometimes these JTAG cases can make it kind of weird. I do want to put pressure because actually I have it lined up really. Ah, shit, and I moved it every time. Okay, so I'm going to take this little ultra-fine iron here. I'm just going to tack down the corners. It helps hold it. I got to turn some light on here. 
Make sure it's not too bright. All right. So now uh, I have a chisel on my iron. I don't usually use it for dragging, but I don't feel like switching. So let's see what happens with it. Melt some of this flux. I think I put a little too much. Can't believe it, but too much flux. That's a rare statement to come out of my mouth. Yeah, see, these ones don't drag real well. Try to get the extra flux off of there. I mean the extra solder. See, I'm trying to be lazy and just trying to, you know, swipe it away, but there we go. Honestly, you should just get a, you know, some wick and get rid of it. Instead of trying to be fancy. Alright, so that looks... Looks okay. That's got a little low on flux over here, so I did not use too much flux. Let's try to bring some more over. And you can tell when it gets low on flux because it doesn't move as well. Um, now this back one's going to be a little bit harder because of the, you know, the case. Because I have it bent like in a 90, and this is on the back side, so... This is where the uh, knife tip, you know, works a lot better. But what, what we're going to make do with what we got. Just like that. And this one, you just have to have a very light touch. Because if you don't, you'll drag it and you'll drag the pins along with you. And I guess that looks good. This one looks kind of low. Okay. Uh -huh. The right one. So I'm kind of at a weird angle again, the way I'm holding my vice here, but not too bad. And um, I probably didn't need to add the extra solder, but I, I like to make sure things look, you know, really good in solder. I like it to overlap like this one, uh, even though it's probably soldered. I just like to visually see that it's soldered and know that it's not going to have trouble later on, especially like, a, you know, for the vibration of the trucks and whatever. I guess I'll clean it a little bit. So I just like to, you know, make sure everything is good, even though I'm pretty sure everything is good. 
you can just, you know, oh, look at that. Look what we found. This is why you always check. Nothing else there, so it's just this one. Where'd he go? Which one was it? It was this one. And, you know, when the, uh, before I zoomed in, he looked, he looked perfect. Only, uh, even zoomed in sometimes you, you can't really see it, but now nah, he's pretty obvious. I guess I should have done this before I cleaned it, huh? Because now, since there's no real flux there, it's not working that good. Oh my goodness. And then I just go from bad to worse. There we go. Alright, so let's check this one. And, uh, you know, when I'm checking, I like to take my tweezers and like push on them just in case. But all these are really solid. See, this is why I like to overlap them because you just know. You just you just know that it's good. Now this row might concern me a little bit. This row looked kind of high, like it was sitting up a little bit. So I'm gonna check all of them. But they, they, they seem fine. I'm not sure if I had a leg, you know, bent down that was causing this to lift up or what happened there. But they're all connected good. See, these you can all visually see no problems at all. This one is a little bit. <coughs> excuse me. This one is a little bit off looking in the camera, but nothing. Nothing bad. Good. So, I'm trying to wash out more of that flux, brush it away. Dry it, and then I will add a dab of coating. Well, actually, I'm going to test them first before I add the coating, because that coating, once you put it down, it's it's a mess to try to rework the look. I don't think that's good enough. All right, so there we are.